Dime, estoy aquí. Per ¿Perdona? Eh, espera, eh, ¿estás hablando de Building ICT Capacity o de Oceans of Cooperation? Building, vale, yo acabo de abrir Building. Están allí esperando y él ya está allí, ¿eh? Ah, voy a ver. Ah, espera, sí, Building es de Clan. No os preocupéis, sí. Hi, everybody. Hi, hello, good morning, everyone. Hello, everyone. <laughs> good morning, everybody. Hello. Good morning, everybody. Hello. Hello. Hola, Natalia. Hola. <ríe> Hola, José Manuel. <ríe> con, con tu nombre tenías que saber aprender a hablar a espa español. <ríe> sí, sí, sí. He escuchado hablar de ti. Ah, sí, 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 en el Live Watch, claro, con, claro, claro, con Javier sí, y, y, y Pertenece Juan a Live Watch, claro, con, con Juan Miguel y con, y con Javier. Pues un placer ¿eh? conocerte tú también. El Igualmente, y Encantado. seguro que hablaremos en un futuro. Sí, claro que sí, claro que sí. Estamos deseando poder tener ya esa interlocución más directa con vosotros. Y, y bueno, la verdad que yo acepté esta invitación por parte de, de Declan, que fue muy amable de querer compartir y que yo pudiera estar en este foro tan interesante. Y, y nada, pero vamos deseando empezar a hacer cosillas. Perfecto.
Pilar, can you help uh, to, to see if uh, we are waiting more um, now people to join or they'll join a bit later so that we can start? Hi, hi, Pilar. If, if you are talking, if you are muted. We cannot hear you. <laughs> I repeat then. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry for that. Uh, well, I just introduced myself. I'm Pilar Gomez from uh, ISC, and uh, I try to manage this session. Um, and you are very welcome to this Africa Europe Science and Innovation Summit. We are just waiting uh, two more minutes, I think, uh, just to give the five minutes late uh, uh, frame for everybody. So to make sure uh, people uh, will see the whole conference or the whole session. So it's just two more minutes to wait. And if you have any questions, okay. we can. Uh, I can put a preliminary uh, list of the speaking order in the, in the chat. But of course, we are very flexible because I understood that some of our speakers will join a bit later. But uh, just while we are waiting, I will put for uh, everyone to know uh, more or less what is the, the order. And uh, after two, three minutes, I will explain how we go forward for the recording, of course. Thank you. That's very useful, uh, Karina. And I'm going to make you co-hosts, right? So you will have more rights. Is that okay for you? Thank you. Hello, Maciej Lubiski here. How do we proceed? We are just waiting two more minutes to start. Hello, how are you? Hello. How are you? Fine. Yeah, this is Yasuna from Ethiopia. Hi, you're very welcome. How are you? I'm going, I'm doing great. And are you? We are doing fine. Thank you. Nice to meet you for the second time. I don't see yet Sherry. Sherry, I think. Uh, sorry, Karina. I don't see yet uh, Sherry from Mokasa. I make you the co host. You should have it next to your uh, name in the participants. You mean Yasuna or, or? 
Okay, then uh, I, I suggest we start. And uh, we'll be flexible uh, because we are already living in this situation for more than one year. Uh, we are, I think, all more or less uh, well acquainted with uh, these online platforms, and we should be, of course, uh, very open and uh, be patient sometimes. So, hello everyone. My name is Karina Angelieva, and I'm advisor to the Minister of Education and Science. And uh, I'm a quite a long time, more than 10 years, involved uh, in the Competitiveness Council and um, the framework uh, program uh, of the European Union. For me, it's really a most uh, pleasure to be a, a moderator of today's session because already a decade ago, we started seriously to discuss uh, the need of uh, smart uh, policy and uh, more uh, synergy uh, between different sectors when we are talking about the agri-food system overall. Uh, the, from one uh, point of view, the, the links and the importance of the innovations, research, but also skills we need to develop in this sector. Um, and uh, also the links with other sectors such as environment, uh, water, um, of course, uh, healthy living, uh, biotech. Um, now, where we are 10 years later, after we start this important discussion, I think we are on a very important moment. Uh, we are on the verge of the so-called new program period. And one of the most important uh, elements in this uh, COVID uh, pandemic and post-COVID pandemic way of thinking and policy will be indeed to set uh, strategic uh, policies uh, that are resilient, sustainable for the people, but also open to the world. And uh, in this context, the European uh, Africa Corporation, I believe is really entering its more operational, uh, sustainable, but also ambitious um, uh, time. And uh, I do believe that uh, after today's session, uh, we will have much more um, clear pattern uh, where we are and how we can collaborate uh, so that we make a real impact uh, for the people uh, globally, but also uh, how we can better embed research and innovation policies uh, to find the better solutions uh, in the sector. Uh, I have a preliminary plan so that uh, we have uh, time for more discussion. I would like to ask uh, all the great speakers we have today, a kind of a static group, uh, to keep uh, up to five minutes of their presentation so that we really have afterwards a debate. Now, uh, as uh, some of our speakers will join in the meantime, uh, our idea was today to start uh, with Sherry. Uh, she's a former Minister of Environment, Science and Technology from Ghana, but I uh, don't see her. Maybe she joined under other um, name. Uh, so while Sherry is preparing herself, I would like to invite uh, Mr. Gorbulevsky, uh, the head of cabinet of the Commissioner for Agriculture. Um, I believe that uh, Masi, uh, you can much uh, uh, better uh, put us all uh, in the context and in the ambitions of the European Commission, where we are and what we want to achieve. So uh, for me, it's a really great pleasure to invite you. Um, the screen is yours, please. Thank you. Thank you so very much. Uh, thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for the, to, to the organizers. I'm afraid I wasn't quite aware of the format of the meeting regarding the, 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 the discussion. I would love to have a discussion, but unfortunately, I'll have to leave after my speech because that was what was communicated to me. Uh, that's why I planned uh, other, other things uh, afterwards. But I will, I will jump right in, not to take uh, too much of your time. I think I'll speak around five minutes. 
Well, first of all, I would like to thank uh, you, the organizers, uh, for the invitation and the opportunity to present our EU Africa research and innovation activities in support of this partnership, which is a bit of a mouthful, Partnership for nutri Food Nutrition, Security and Sustainable Agriculture, FNSSA, um, uh, which uh, you know very much uh, includes the elements that my commissioner is very much supportive of, supportive of and the commission as a whole and DG Agri especially. Uh, it is my great pleasure to be here with you today. Um, let's start with a problem that we have in front of us, uh, obviously ensuring the sustainability of food systems for food security is still today a major uh, challenge worldwide. Agriculture must feed an increasingly uh, global uh, growing population, while at the same time, uh, this should be done in a way uh, that alleviates pressure on natural resources, including soils uh, and water, stops the loss of biodiversity, and copes with uncertainties associated with climate change, pest outbreaks, what have you. While past efforts focused on boosting agricultural output to produce more food, today's challenges demand a bit of a new approach. Uh, there is an increasing recognition that the sustainable farming sector can actually provide environmental benefits and services while creating rural employment and sustaining livelihoods. It's a bit of a change in, in approach that we've had for, for a while. Agriculture is by far uh, the single most important economic activity in Africa. Uh, and I had a chance to work in Africa uh, in the external action service and in teach development before. I know how important it is. And it has an important social and economic uh, function and, and, and footprint. An accelerated transition towards more sustainable agricultural systems that produce more with more socioeconomic benefits and with less environmental consequences is, is very much needed. The European Green Deal that uh, is talked about a lot these days uh, is the EU's roadmap for making its economy sustainable in general. This will happen by turning climate and environmental challenges into opportunities across all policy areas and making the transition just and inclusive for all. It covers all sectors of the economy, not just agriculture, obviously, but it does include agriculture and it's an important element of it. To take up these challenges, we need to promote a transformative change in the way that we produce and consume food. We need to put forward sustainable food systems that offer healthy and nutritious food and that at the same time preserve the environment. New innovative ways of managing natural resources including water and soil, should contribute not only to the sustainability of agriculture, and at the same time, should also bring socioeconomic benefits for farmers and society at large. And now to the core of the issue, uh, the solution in, in many ways lies in the r and uh, in, in this uh, partnership uh, that we have. Research and innovation can actually pave the way towards this green transition. And I'd say that research and innovation can support deployment of innovation uh, ecosystems, innovative ecosystems in sustainable agriculture, bringing together entrepreneurs, startups, investors, and business angels to open up new opportunities for new business and explore new markets for agricultural products, produced in harmony again with the environment and also resilient to climate change. So we have the long-standing EU-Africa Partnership on Food Security and Sustainable Agriculture, which aims to strengthen exactly that, which is the European and Africa's science base by supporting scientific excellence across the continent. Joint actions taken under this partnership will enable the transition towards agriculture and food systems that are more resilient, equitable, and with low carbon emissions. Investments in R&I can enable this green transition with solutions that are equally strong in environmental, economic, social, and agronomic dimensions and at the same time provide greater resilience against threats, lessen its expected impacts, and create added value to this joint action. Now, I'm going to move to the implementation of the uh, research and innovation uh, within the FNSSA. Since 2016, the FNSSA partnership specifically focuses on RNI actions to support sustainable intensification of agricultural production systems, food systems, for nutrition, food systems for nutrition, and the expansion and improvement of agriculture markets and trade. Based on past experience analysis and the new political orientations, the FNSSA partnership should contribute with knowledge and innovations to unlock Africa's potential to make progress towards food and nutrition security, a sustainable greener agriculture 
and more circular food systems. It will support the global transition towards sustainable agri-food systems, also in line with the objectives of the EU farm to fork strategy, which I hope uh, you're familiar with, by strengthening the EU, AU, EU Africa Union efforts to ensure food and nutrition security and sustainable agriculture, tackling climate change, protect the environment and preserving biodiversity. It also offers an adequate space for sharing experience in vocational training in agriculture. In this context, the current and future activities of the FNWSA partnership will build on existing activities, benefit to the extent possible from the investments into the recovery from the pandemic, and most importantly, maximize the impacts of the activities undertaken through an effective valorization of the RNI results, providing support to move results from the lab to the market. In particular, research and innovation support to the implementation of the FNWSA partnership under our new research and innovation program, the Horizon Europe 2127, will continue to help address common priorities to ensure food and nutrition security and sustainable agriculture in Africa and in Europe. In particular, RNI support under the partnership will be directed to implement aspects of common interest highlighted in the last EU Africa RNI ministerial meeting that took place in July last year. I'm referring to the implementation of agroecological approaches for food production, which we will also hopefully have in our new uh, common agriculture policy once it gets agreed, hopefully by the end of this month. Such approaches have the potential to support food security and nutrition while restoring the ecosystem services and biodiversity that are essential for sustainable agriculture. The fourth AU EU Agricultural Ministerial Conference on 22nd of June will also address such topics and pave the way for strengthened cooperation. To harness the multiple sustainability benefits that arise from agroecological approaches, an, enab an enabling environment is required, including adapted policies, public investments, institutions, and research priorities. Research and innovation support is necessary to develop knowledge for the implementation of, of agroecology in Europe and in Africa. It will support the transition to sustainable food systems that are equally strong, again, in environmental, economic, social, and agro agroeconomic dimensions, agronomic dimensions. Another area of relevance, uh, we believe, for both regions is the implementation of the so-called One Health approach in food production systems. Under the Horizon Europe work program, that I just mentioned, there will be an action to analyze and apply One Health principles in agro-food chains, which will aim to optimize interactions between plants, animals, humans, and the environment, while taking into consideration the social aspects that need to be addressed for sustainable and fair food systems. In addition, I would like to give you a few words on the PRIMA partnership. This is a 10-year uh, initiative from uh, 2018 to 2028, which was co-funded by EU's research and innovation program Horizon 2020, the previous one, and by member states, and brings together Northern African countries, EU Southern Mediterranean and Middle East countries to jointly align, uh, to jointly align priorities and pooling and to pool resources to develop and deploy innovative solutions for food systems and water resources in the Mediterranean basin. Primas, I guess it's Primas or Primas, Primas main objective is to devise new research and innovation approaches to improve water availability and sustainable agriculture production in a region heavily distressed by climate change, urbanization and population growth. Finally, under Horizon Europe, we are preparing a mission in the area of soil health and food. Um, this is run by the ex-Minister of Agriculture of, of, of Holland, uh, aiming to provide a powerful tool to raise awareness on the importance of soils engage with citizens, create knowledge, and develop solutions for restoring soil health and soil functions by the EU by 2030. The mission will have an international component and will aim to harmonize soil health measurements at the global level, reducing the footprint of our food production system. Activities under the mission will further support this global collaboration with international partners, including partners most uh, obviously with, uh, from Africa. To close up, um, I would like to stress the following three elements. With the FNWSA partnership, we have a well-established instrument, first and foremost, which provides the basis uh, for our enhanced cooperation. We need to really make full use of it, let's do it. In addition, it is important to give visibility to the achievements that have already been made, and in turn these results to innovative solutions, 
supporting food and nutrition security and the green transition, bringing benefits for our people. And um, the third one is basically that I'm very much looking forward to see the fruits of this cooperation. And, I, and, I, and I'm sure we'll, we'll build on what we've achieved so far. Uh, I would like to I would like to thank you very much. Uh, I look forward to the to the presentations. I'll have to leave a little bit later, uh, but but, but uh, thank you again for your attention and for your uh, invitation to the meeting. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Gulubeski. For, for I think for for us is really honor to have you here, uh, and to uh, and we are very uh, happy that uh, you and the commissioner are very much engaged in this. Um, uh, cooperation. Uh, I personally and professionally believe that we have uh, um, uh, a lot of uh, favorable now conditions to, to rethink and to strengthen our cooperation. Uh, if I have to, to, to recap, but something very important to get them motivated from your speech to other participants, uh, you really um, stress on something extremely important that we have to give visibility what is already there and to expand uh, what we have. I also believe that it's very important to basically bring visibility, but also access to already the good achievements in the sector. Uh, and of course, to, um, uh, to rethink uh, how we can uh, bring capacity, capacity building and better networking because we need to involve uh, new research actors in this collaboration. But as you said, our main goal should be how to make the quality of life of the people better. Uh, so uh, I would like uh, now to invite, because I do not uh, see uh, uh, Sherry yet, or if uh, Sherry is uh, here, please uh, call. Uh, I would like to give the floor to Isabel, uh, from France um, uh, to give the perspective uh, from uh, uh, from uh, uh, a member state, but also from a very strong research organization, uh, exactly taking inspiration from the words of uh, Massier. Uh, what we have already achieved uh, and where are the challenges, but also the opportunities. Uh, Isabella, the screen is yours. Thank you so much. Uh, yes, your mic is. Oui. Yes, thank you very much for giving the floor and thank you for the invitation. Is it possible to, to share the screen? Yes, yes, please. The, I will take this one. Put it there. And I will. Okay. Is it okay for everybody? We see very well. Yes, nice. And do you hear me also? Yes, we can hear you. Nice. Therefore, I will begin just I present myself. I am Isabelle Hippolyte. I am a scientific officer at INR. And I will present this morning a European initiative, which is an ERANET co-fund named LIPAGRI, Long-Term uh, uh, Europe-Africa Research and Innovation Partnership on Food and Nutrition Security and Sustainable Agriculture. I would like also to thank the previous speaker, since it has really well and in detail uh, framed the, the F, uh, food and nutrition security and sustainable agriculture uh, landscape. And then I will get likely quite rapidly in the first uh, slide, just to uh, remind the FNSSC uh, priorities that have been set in November 2013, which was sustainable in intensification in the frame of the common challenge that are faced by Africa and Europe. Agriculture and food system for nutrition with the failure of food system today to generate acceptable levels of nutrition, expansion and improvement of agriculture markets and trade, and promoting, of, of course, uh, cross-cutting topics. That was in 2013, the first uh, 
agenda and first uh, priorities for NFS uh, for high level policy dialogue and then in 2016 they uh, adopt a roadmap with these priorities and they ended and indicated their expectation that African and European countries make substantial investment for the optimization of research and innovation. It is in this frame that the ERANET co-fund LIPAGRI was uh, launched. It was under the umbrella of H 2020 European program and it started in December 2016. Oop, 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 oop. Where am I? There. Then this Iranet co-fund had the ambition and the challenge of building an Europe-Africa uh, consortium for NI in FNSSA, funding a cluster of relevant RNI projects and feeding the FNSSA RNI strategy for the future. Then it, uh, 30 partners were involved, are involved in the Iranet co-fund from uh, 18 countries from Africa, Europe and associated partners like uh, Turkey, and also for international uh, bodies like SIAM in Italy. The total budget was 28 million euros, including the, um, the, the support of the Iranet itself, with two pillars. The first one was a joint co-fund uh, call, which was launched in March 2017. And uh, the second pillar was the additional activities, which was, in this case, feeding the Europe-Africa long-term partnership in uh, research and the uh, um, innovation initiative on FNSSA. The schedule is the following. It began in December, 2016. It is supposed to finish in November, 2021, but uh, because of some constraint I will detail uh, later, we are asking for an extension of one year. The, for, for launching the call for the project, the, the initiative was, was built on the theory of change and the LIPA agree approach was the following. We were we had first uh, focused, of course, on the priorities of FNSSA, uh, analyzing the problem, uh, defining the causes of the problem and underlying the knowledge relative causes and the gap to, to fill. On this basis, the call text was written, then the call was launched, and on this basis, the, the, the coordinators of the project and the teams have to produce proposal addressing these uh, topics and uh, these uh, issues. Therefore, they were selected and they have to, to, to pursue their project activities. For the monitoring of the project, um, some uh, indicators for monitoring and evaluating the project were defined uh, by the LIPAGRI uh, team, by the LIPAGRI coordination and uh, funding bodies. And uh, the project are uh, evaluated and monitored on the, on, on the third pillar, which are the output, then therefore the outcome, and at, uh, uh, at last the impact of the project. These uh, this three pillars of the theory of change will be used to feed some uh, knowledge sharing and research uptake by different communities, such as the, the, such as the scientific community, stakeholders, and also for capacity development and communication. For, uh, for this purpose, three main topics were defined, sustainable intensification, uh, agriculture and food system for nutrition. And the third one was improvement of agricultural markets and trade, really in association with the HP, uh, HLPD, uh, HLD, uh, high policy uh, level dialogue strategy roadmap, and uh, also cross-cutting um, initiative were also welcome in, in this frame. 
Some numbers, 200 pre-proposals pre were submitted to the, to the call. The, these pre-proposals were evaluated by an international uh, evaluation uh, panel. Then uh, there was the funder selection meeting from which 27 RNI projects were selected with 160 African and European teams. The total budget regarding the, the project was uh, 22.7 million euros, uh, 7 million euros coming from the EC contribution as top up. The project started. Uh, in uh, September 2018, and uh, they, are, they are supposed to, to have a duration of three, um, 36 months, but as I already told, we are asking for a 12-month extension, and we hope we will get it very soon. Other numbers, then, uh, from the 27 RNI project, Nine were in relation with topic one, uh, two, uh, eight were in, in relation with topic two, six with topic three, and four projects were cross-cutting uh, project uh, um, on, on, the, on at least two of the main topics. If we are looking to the thematics, they are well, well um, spread in the agronomy uh, in the FNSSC um, um, landscape with agronomy, plant breeding, nutrition, food processing, animal disease, and so on. Regarding the teams which were funded, some were funded from Europe, of course, and of course, some Africa. Uh, Germ fr uh, from the European side, France and Germany were, were well represented, well, uh, uh, and the Netherlands also. From the uh, African side, Kenya is really present, Uganda also, but South Africa, Burkina Faso, and, uh, and Ghana were also uh, well represented in these teams. Lipagri faced some constraints, financial ones, actually, uh, some funding agency were really dependent on the EC contribution and uh, with, uh, we, we, we encountered more than one year delay in uh, getting the second payment of UC, which was really causes, caused trouble to the, the, the projects. And furthermore, some agency delayed also their, their own financial commitment. Some uh, of them were not in the capability to commit the funds they promised to, to, to commit. And this disturbed a lot all the, all the, uh, most of the project, uh, I would say. And uh, like all the research teams, COVID-19 also impacted the project. Ampering file trials, experiment, and stakeholder survey. But Lipagri was especially, especially uh, impacted since the transcontinental travels were prohibited and it was really in the art of the project to have some, a lot of exchange between uh, Europe and Africa. This, uh, it is why we asked for 12 year extension and it is why also that why uh, EC agreed on the principle of this extension. We, we performed uh, some uh, mid-term evaluation and monitoring of the project. I am presenting there some of the main uh, numbers of this uh, evaluation. Then uh, from the 27 uh, project, 200, 206 teams were um, present. One, uh, 158 were funded. From this, we, we get a lot of dissemination activities, taking in mind that all the projects used dissemination tools, which are websites or, or, or other medias. From this dissemination, what we plan for the very next month is, it's a matchmaking event, likely in September, in order to put together stakeholder, researcher, and uh, uh, participants interested in FNSSA um, 
issues. And of course, we will also organize the final uh, meeting for the project. Regarding the impact in relation with the theory of change, uh, of course, fi final reports will be beat in order to have this output outcomes and uh, impact well defined and harmonized between the project. I think it is really important and we will manage on that. And also we will hope that this uh, very interesting initiative will, uh, will feed some initiative like the Green Era Up, which is now, uh, uh, which will be next month is likely uh, launched by the EC, by the EC. Well, to close up the project and following Air Africa, which was the first initiative at the European level linking Europe and Africa, and Africa, LIPAGRI was the first initiative for INI research of implementation of the roadmap of the high policy level dialogue involving 18 countries from Europe and Africa. This initiative is likely a cornerstone for future RNI alliance between Europe and African countries, like the ERC, which, we, which is in the heart of the Leap for FNSS uh, CSA, with 24 funders and around 100 funded uh, teams. And likely, it will be also a proact the LIPAGRI. Um, uh, network will be also proactive for proposing innovative approaches and modalities through the additional activities documents we are now building. And also the PAGRI uh, result will likely highlight important teams and topics in the FNSSA area for common interest for Africa and Europe in the frame of global change. And I think that it is really an important point, climate of, co climate of course, but also other very convergent evolution, which is quite new, such as farming models or digitalization, ICT, and others, uh, other teams. Then from our side, INR coordinates the LIPAGRI uh, ERANET. We also coordinate FOSC, which is also an ERANET from um, uh, linking Africa and Europe. And we also participate to other African initiatives such as LIP4 FNSSA or PRIMA. And uh, we are strengthening our dynamics uh, with the African collaboration. Thank you very much for your attention. Uh, dear Isabel, uh, thank you so much. Uh, I think uh, this is amazing uh, job uh, and uh, it shows how much uh, already has been done and uh, how many uh, teams have been involved. Uh, and uh, I believe that uh, now here is also relevant visibility. It will be really nice to continue this uh, dialogue and to, to, to see how to how to harvest all these results and to, to scale them up uh, in, the, in the new partnership and of course uh, to involve uh, more actors. Uh, now I see that uh, here with us um, is the Agriculture Research Council. Uh, this is uh, to a season. I don't see the, the video. Mr. Mahmabela, do you hear us? I think he's here. They, 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 they said from South Africa that maybe they'll have some problems because the, the, the CEO, uh, the CEO, Mr. Shadrak, uh, is uh, being basically outside of the country. So um, I will try to reach again, uh, again then, but uh, without losing time, because I think it's becoming quite interesting. Uh, I will ask the, the other speakers for a kind of a flexibility and to, to support me to be ready to join. Uh, so let's uh, 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 let's do a kind of a, a, a change in the speaking order and uh, uh, to invite um, uh, Jose. Do you have uh, the possibility now to, to present us the, the impact of white block sharing in this collaboration? 
Yes, of course, uh, Karina. Thank you, Jose. And after you, I will ask uh, Natalia. Thank you. I will share my screen. Um, it's me. I hope you can see the screen. Yeah, perfect. We see well. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you, Karina. Thank you, Pilar, uh, the organizer, for, for invit inviting us. To this excellent session, I will try to keep the presentation to five minutes to have time for discussion and for, for the other speakers. Um, I'm Jose Manuel Avila. I work at uh, LifeWatch ERIC. It's a distributed uh, European research infrastructure uh, consortium focused on biodiversity and ecosystem research. Uh, we are presenting our, our contribution um, to uh, transition to more sustainable agri-food uh, systems. Thanks to, to Mr. Matik, uh, he's, he's not right now with, with us and, and the previous speakers because uh, the, the presentation uh, was really interesting. And you, you already have presented the, the challenges of the current uh, agri-food systems in a very clear way. So I will, I will jump um, uh, to, to the agroecology approach, okay, uh, as, as, as they uh, have uh, introduced um, uh, this, uh, this uh, agroecosystem, agroecology uh, uh, approach uh, as a, to, to provide a sustainable agriculture systems with a strong focus on socioeconomic and environmental benefits, being at the same time resilient to, to climate change. You know? So um, we are trying to, to, to with this agroecology, agroecological approach to approach this uh, theme, this priority, Thing that is the sustainable agriculture, the sustainable, say, intensification. Um, uh, well, the, the, the problems of the current, uh, of the modern agriculture has already uh, arised. And um, what we try to, to, to bring here is that um, uh, the, the integral to, to, to FAO's common vision for sustainable foods and agriculture. Agroecology is, is a, a key part of the global response to this climate of instability, offering a, a unique approach to, to meeting significant increases in our food needs of the future while ensuring no one is uh, left behind. Um, agroecology is an integrated approach that simultaneously applies ecological and social concepts and principles to the design and management of foods and agricultural systems. It seeks to, to optimize the interactions between plants, animals, humans, and the environment, taking into account the the ecological, the ecology research, um, and, and the environment and the human, no? we're taking into consideration all the social aspects, the, the communities no? that are behind these uh, uh, agricultural systems uh, 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 to, to, to be addressed this in a sustainable and fair uh, way. Uh, the, the FAO has brought the 10 elements of agroecology for agri-food and food systems transformation that put in the middle the co-creation and sharing of knowledge, the inclusion of all the actors in the agri-food systems, uh, the culture, the food tradition, the human and social values, and the diversity and biodiversity. Um, so part of this, uh, to, to achieve this, this, this challenge, the challenges that were presented before, uh, we need a strong coordination between uh, different countries. You know, the, uh, Europe and Africa, Africa and Europe should work together in a shared way, sharing knowledge in cooperation with R&I, and &I, trying to, to create a more sustainable uh, agri-food uh, system. In, in this sense, that there is a, a, a United, Nations, uh, United Nations organizing an, a food system summit in next uh, September. That we are that, that in which we, we are trying to, to discuss further this this um, this approach. We in in Life Watch Eric, we are uh, as I said an European research infrastructure focused on biodiversity and ecosystem research, and try to to provide some uh, tools, digital tools to the community, to to researchers, to farmers, to citizens, to policymakers to help to increase the understanding on how this ecosystem works, the agroecosystem works, and trying to foster, to help to, help to this transition to a more sustainable agriculture. Um, we provide different kind of uh, digital tools, uh, such as uh, what we call uh, LightWatch Eric Tesseract. To, uh, it's, a, it's a tool, it's services, it's science tools for increasing the understanding for ecosystem research, also with 
blockchain technology trying to give uh, the socioeconomic value of the the, the agroecosystem services no the, the environmental and and socioeconomical um aspect of, of the agriculture um we are part of uh, the project already. It's an European project. We are collaborating with other projects and with other partners uh, across Europe, trying to uh, use this technology, this uh, the, the digital, uh, the, the, the manage of data to create new knowledge, to share best practices uh, regarding uh, agroecology. Um, Another thing that it's very important and we want to introduce in the discussion is the capacity building. It's very important to work with the community for uh, the scientific knowledge and, and, and the, uh, to, 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 to um, increase the, the awareness about the sustainable agriculture and also some competencies and skills uh, about digital, uh, basic digital uh, use. Um, as we said, we are part of, uh, we are working in already, we are uh, in, in Europe, at Europe uh, level, we are working also in other projects in EU, select like Resinfra, with other Latin American countries, trying to, and, and to, 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 to set up an office, a virtual office, to give them, to help them to approach to, to um, bioeconomy, and, um, and to, to, to close this, uh, this, this talk, um, we want to take the opportunity to, to, to start working with Africa, with African countries in this core. Uh, it's the agroecological approaches in Africa agriculture systems. It's an Horizon Europe uh, proposal for 2022. And we will have the opportunity to, to go in deep uh, in this talk uh, to, uh, tomorrow, Friday at two in, 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 this, uh, in this summit. So please join us. And uh, we are creating a consortium for a proposal to, to, to approach agroecology in, in Africa with a um, very important African uh, 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 partners. And also the opportunity to introduce the NDC, the, the Global Europe Core, this is the Neighborhood Development and International Cooperation Instruments that will uh, bring around 18 billion euros uh, for cooperation with third, with third parties, with other countries. Uh, yeah, and it will include cooperation with Africa. So we want to take advantage of these instruments to uh, co-share and, and, and co-create new knowledge around sustainable uh, systems in, in agriculture in Europe and in Africa. Thank you so much. I I, I will I will I I get uh, uh, to the to the five minutes more or less. Um, but Karina is, is now here with us. Pilar, if, if you think it's okay to to keep it with, with the, 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 the schedule, we can go to uh, to Natalia. It's a presentation. Sí, uh, Jose Manuel, uh, we have yeah. a running order and all the questions and answers will be done at the end of the of the session. Okay, so please, Natalia. Sí, hola. Hola. ¿Se, se ha alterado el orden de intervención? Sí. Um, ¿Intervengo Mira, yo sí. ahora? Eh, sí, un... sí. Eh, per, per, perdona, perdóname. Eh, eh, could we ask Angelina because we were looking for one of the speakers that uh, had some problems to get in and now he's in. So maybe eh, Karina, if you can eh, let us know what eh, will be the, the best to do. Intervengo ahora, ¿no, José Manuel? Espera, espera. Eh, un momento. Esperamos a que, nos inde a que nos indiquen, ¿no? Es que sí. ha habido... Uh, there was um, Había algún problema. No, just so one speaker was trying to come in and he was before you. So if he's available, he maybe he can just take the the floor. Um, Karina, are you there? So Natalia, please go ahead. I'm sorry for this because 
please. So we don't waste time here. Thank you very much, uh, Natalia. Please. Okay. Puedo compartir. I sí. can. Yes, okay. please. ¿Lo veis todos? Uh, yes. 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 Okay. Bueno, buenos días a todos. Eh, eh, muchas gracias por, por las intervenciones que he tenido la suerte de, de presenciar. Todas súper interesantes. Eh, mi exposición va a ser en español. Lo solicité a los organizadores y, y bueno, espero que no, que no sea una, un, un problema. Eh, gracias en primer lugar a, a, a ERAP, a African European Radio Astronomy Platform, por, por invitarme a participar en, en esta interesante cumbre de ciencia e innovación África y Europa, en aras de mejorar la cooperación en, entre ambos continentes que consideramos amigos. Eh, el, son dos continentes con un potencial científico e innovador eh, grande, bueno, Europa ya lo tiene más que demostrado y África está en camino. Eh, pero efectivamente necesita de un entorno normativo pues, que propicie la cooperación con Europa para afrontar los desafíos globales comunes. Eh, yo estoy aquí porque represento, soy CEO de una fundación privada que nace en 2020, llevamos un año de andadura, se llama Fundación Ingenio y es una fundación que trabaja eh, bueno, eh, para llevar a cabo una agricultura sostenible eh, no en vano somos un, la huerta de Europa desde los años 60. Los agricultores que representa la Fundación Ingenio están ubicados en el campo de Cartagena, en la región de Murcia, en el sureste español, una región eh, prácticamente muy afectada por el cambio climático y por los efectos de la desertificación y la sequía, eh, pero sin embargo tiene un grandísimo potencial en producción hortofrutícola. En concreto, la Fundación Ingenio Voy a ir pasando. Eh, engloba a, a 45 empresas, eh, las más importantes de la zona, en total 10.000 agricultores. Eh, pone en valor el cultivo de alimentos a través de una agricultura familiar, sostenible e innovadora. Esa es su principal misión. Eh, trabajamos en el desarrollo de soluciones técnicas y sostenibles frente a los desafíos del sector y de los agricultores del campo de Cartagena. Eh, marcados también por eh, una cantidad de políticas opresivas eh, a las que no estamos haciendo frente. ¿no? Trabajamos para avanzar, como he dicho, en un sector hacia una economía innovadora y circular. No solo producimos alimentos, sino que somos fuente de conocimiento, de experiencia y de tecnología. Innovación y transferencia tecnológica son para nosotros nuestro, nuestra razón de ser y nuestro faro de guía. Eh, la agricultura de regadío eh, tiene una gran importancia para llevar a cabo el, bueno, como en el impacto económico. ¿no? África, como he podido leer, cuenta con un gran dividendo demográfico. Para 2034 el continente africano tendrá la población de edad de trabajar más grande del mundo, 1,1 millón, mil millones, superando a India y a China. Y esto es algo muy valioso en un mundo envejecido. Por lo tanto, lo que quiero trasladaros también es la importancia de, eh, bueno, de, de llevar a cabo una agricultura de regadío sostenible para poder mejorar los ratios de empleo y poder dar, eh, emplear a toda esta población joven que, con la que África contará en unos años. Por poneros un ejemplo de los datos que manejamos en el campo de Cartagena y lo que, las cifras que se manejan de empleo, representamos eh, una industria agroalimentaria murciana, representa el 32,5% del empleo y el 28,3% de la producción genera 180.000 empleos en las zonas regables del trasvase Tajo Segura y eh, representamos el 37% del Producto Interior Bruto de la comarca y empleamos a 47.400 trabajadores a tiempo completo. Eh, esta es la importancia de la agricultura de, re, de regadío eh, bien ejercida, de manera sostenible, de ahí que África tenga un gran reto que abordar y llevar a cabo políticas de, bueno, de, de agricultura sostenible para, que, para poder también crecer en este sentido. ¿no? La Fundación Ingenio ha creado un grupo de innovación eh, para liderar la agroalimentación del futuro, porque por un lado hay necesidad de encontrar soluciones verdes para reducir, eh, obviamente, las críticas 
que se focalizan dentro del sector por los, por los frentes más ecologistas a los que nos enfrentamos, pero por otro lado hay una oportunidad para liderar la innovación en Agritech, atraer talento y ser más competitivos y aumentar las líneas de negocio del sector. Este grupo de innovación, que es formado por empresas líderes agroalimentarias, estarán al mando y aprovecharán décadas de experiencia y dedicación del sector para proveer su, per su perspectiva única con respecto a la viabilidad tecnológica y la demanda del mercado. Por tanto, ayudarán a identificar, evaluar y desarrollar nuevos proyectos y a cambio gozarán de grandes beneficios. El grupo de innovación será el epicentro de nuestra fundación. Quiero destacar que España eh, es pionera, es líder mundial junto con Israel en riego por goteo, en fertirrigación sostenible. Nosotros tenemos un 98% de la superficie regable, cerca de 42.000 hectáreas en riego localizado. Somos un ejemplo para el mundo. Es la agricultura que todo el mundo quiere ejercer. Yo creo que África tiene un gran, eh, un, un gran espejo en el que mirarse en la agricultura que realizamos en el campo de Cartagena. Nos gustaría que pudierais vernos como una fuente de conocimiento para poder aplicar eh, lo que nosotros ya llevamos trabajando e invirtiendo durante décadas, eh, desde el año 79 que, empezó, que se convirtió toda la superficie, era un secano y la convirtieron en superficie de regadío y es muy importante que eh, podáis tomarnos como ejemplo para los retos y los desafíos que tiene el continente africano. La Fundación Ingenio tiene también alianzas importantes con el grupo KIAT y con Comunica Technology. Es una joint venture eh, con procedencia de la Universidad de Oxford. Estamos en relación con otros stakeholders eh, importantes para llevar a, cambio, a cabo el desarrollo de todos nuestros desafíos. Eh, el enfoque son retos reales con soluciones al corto plazo, buscar tecnologías y oportunidades de negocio claras para nuestro grupo de empresas. Nuestros, objeti nuestros objetivos son formar un punto de encuentro para promover la evaluación y el lanzamiento de proyectos de innovación impulsados por nuestra fundación, donde confluirán empresas agrícolas, startups, empresas punteras de tecnología, universidades y centros de investigación. Identificar líneas estratégicas de trabajo que den lugar a una oportunidad de negocio, acercando a las, acercándonos a las tecnologías disruptivas para atraer el conocimiento e impulsar sus proyectos. Aplicar el conocimiento de empresas del sector para asegurar la viabilidad técnica, económica y empresarial de estos nuevos proyectos, de forma que satisfagan la demanda del mercado y se cumplan con los objetivos estratégicos de las empresas del sector. En definitiva, que este ecosistema de innovación sea la clave del éxito en todos los proyectos. Por lo tanto, queremos fomentar un cambio cultural dentro del sector a través de la formación y de los intercambios nacionales para, internacionales para los que África puede estar también en nuestro punto de mira, como un aliado más. Por lo tanto, para nosotros la tecnología y la innovación son las dos patas por las que pasa cualquier actividad que llevamos a cabo. Tenemos creada una plataforma que hemos denominado Plataforma Raíz. Es una Plataforma que se centra en tres ejes, una herramienta para encontrar nuevos proyectos en áreas clave, para lanzar retos de interés común de la Fundación Ingenio y formar alianzas, como he dicho antes, con actores clave de la cadena de valor y lanzar retos juntos en sostenibilidad, agricultura de precisión, desperdicio alimentario, economía circular, cambio climático y desertificación, trazabilidad, incrementar la producción de alimentos y, la, y como no, la seguridad alimentaria. También la Fundación Ingenio está muy preocupada y va a trabajar y a invertir gran cantidad de recursos en llevar a cabo proyectos que fomenten la biodiversidad. Eh, estamos impulsando un estudio actual para la creación de una red de fincas seleccionadas por tipos de suelo, ubicación y tipos de cultivo para estudiar su fauna asociada. La caracterización de la misma resultante por estratos y grupos faunísticos. En el segundo lugar, realizar un programa de mejora y potenciación de estas especies y comunidades faunísticas y se establecerán medidas para el fomento de la fauna en el sistema agrario. Todo ello centralizado en las políticas del European Green Deal, estas políticas eh, que se centran en la estrategia de la granja a la mesa, Farm to Fork, y las políticas de descarbonización que lleva a cabo eh, la Unión Europea, como bien conocéis todos. Eh, la Fundación Ingenio va a ser un actor privado, con fondos privados, pero que va a implementar estas políticas en todas sus empresas y en todos los retos que lleve a cabo. No en vano, los sistemas alimentarios tienen un grandísimo reto, mucho más allá 
que, eh, bueno, que las empresas energéticas en la descarbonización de la economía. ¿no? Tenemos eh, una gran responsabilidad de llevar a cabo eh, mejoras con todos eh, los avances tecnológicos y científicos. Por lo tanto, y para ir terminando, para nosotros es muy importante estar hoy en este foro y que nos veáis como un actor privado, pero que también puede colaborar en políticas públicas y en los programas eh, estamos abiertos a la cooperación con los socios africanos, con nuestros socios africanos en el marco de Horizonte Europa y los programas en el Instrumento de Vecindad, Desarrollo y Cooperación Internacional. Damos también la bienvenida a la oportunidad de trabajar juntos para abordar los Objetivos de Desarrollo Sostenible de Naciones Unidas, esos 17 objetivos para abordar juntos los retos comunes. Las, aso las asociaciones, como digo, son importantes para nosotros y África es un vecino continental muy próximo y querido. Por esto representa muchas oportunidades de colaboración. En septiembre también tenemos eh, entendido que la FAO eh, de las Naciones Unidas organizará la cumbre sobre sistemas alimentarios sostenibles y queremos trabajar con nuestros socios de África y Europa para avanzar en esos resultados específicos. Nuestra Agritech Mission es clara, es poner en valor la producción de alimentos de una manera sostenible e innovadora, algo que ya llevemos, llevamos, nuestras empresas llevan ejercitando durante décadas, pero tenemos que evolucionar ¿eh? para convertirnos en, en un ejemplo, en el Silicon Valley de la agricultura europea, porque podemos serlo, tenemos esa capacidad de liderazgo y queremos aspirar a conseguirlo. Muchas gracias. Thank you, thank you so much. Eh, gracias, Natalia. Eh, Karina. Thank you so much, Natalia. Gracias, Karina. Thank you, thank you so much. And after the after Jose, uh, basically we somehow close the circle uh, of important uh, political messages. Uh, we start this morning with the head of cabinet uh, who was talking about visibility and scaling up. But I think Jose brought the matter on evidence and data. This is something very important to discuss. Uh, with uh, our African uh, uh, partners uh, how to build capacity in this area. And now I think you present something that wakes us up a little bit, uh, how innovations really can work on the field, which is really great. And um, I think this is uh, uh, indeed a very important, uh, important uh, showcase. Uh, I, uh, I had a message before a while from uh, Tulazize Magbewa uh, from the Agrarian uh, Council from South Africa. He wrote me, he's here and listening to us, so I do hope he can join, but I really don't know what is happening. If, um, Tulazize, You wrote me a message just five minutes ago. Yeah. I think I went to meet the connection. Not responded, but now you hear me now. We hear you very best. Okay, yeah, no, basically what I was saying is that I'm in, I'm in the meeting, but I'm not in a position to present. So I'll just listen and participate. Ah, okay, thank you, thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much for, uh, for letting us know because uh, as I shared already with our um, uh, participants, unfortunately, uh, Shadrach, uh, uh, the, the, the CEO of the Agricultural Research Council of South Africa is, uh, on a business uh, uh, trip, but uh, I'm, I'm happy that you're here and you can bring these important messages uh, uh, back home. Uh, so I'll definitely do that. Thank you very much for having okay. us. Okay. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, so, um, as I do not see uh, Sherry uh, yet, uh, let's uh, proceed according to the um, agenda. Um, and I'm trying to keep the gender balance. So uh, after Natalia, I would like uh, to, to invite uh, Andy, uh, the CEO of uh, EAT Food, uh, to, to, to join us and to share uh, 
one, I, I must say, one of the emblem of the flagships of the um, European Union uh, that started uh, uh, some years ago, maybe almost two, two decades, uh, the EAT. Uh, but uh, one of the kicks, the community innovation uh, um, um, communities, uh, I must say, is uh, really a good showcase uh, when we want to bring uh, capacity, uh, innovation, skills uh, for, uh, the, for the sake and for the benefit of the people. Uh, so I would like now to invite uh, Andy to take the, the screen and after Andy we will have Elizabeth uh, from the French Agriculture uh, Research Organization. Okay, so Mr. Zinke, the, the floor is yours. Thank you so much, Karina. Really appreciate it. Good to see you again. Hold on, I'm going to screen share now. Um, Let's see here. Let's get it on slideshow mode. Okay. Can you all see the screen now? Yes, we can. Excellent. All right. So a good afternoon to my esteemed fellow speakers and all of you important participants. My name is Andy Zinga, and I am the CEO of EIT Food. My particular thanks go out to the organizers for inviting me to share with you our approach and the work we do in transforming the food system. EIT Food is, sorry, uh, EIT Food is one of eight so-called knowledge and innovation communities or KICS funded and supported by the European Institute of Innovation and Technology, also known as EIT, which in itself is an independent body of the European Union since 2008. Each kick is established with a unique mission to tackle the societal challenges in a particular industry vertical like energy, health, and in our case, food, which includes agriculture. EIT Food has been created in 2017 with a specific mandate to transform the food system and to put consumers at the center of this change process, as well as to drive progress towards healthier diets and more sustainable food production and consumption. As such, our vision is to build a food system where everybody can access and enjoy sustainable, safe, and healthy food with trust and fairness from farm to fork. The way we are delivering on this vision is by bringing together organizations and actors that share this common vision and provide them a pre-competitive and collaborative environment so that ideas can flourish and different knowledge and economic actors can develop solutions co-funded by us that will ultimately create systemic impact. In less than four years, EIT Food has grown to be the world's largest food innovation ecosystem with over 230 partners. And you can see the logos of all of them now coming up. So this might take a moment. With a vast network of innovative partners, we cover the entire food supply chain, seed to fork, but we also have expertise from side sectors, from universities, research centers, consumer organizations, large multinational companies, SMEs, and civil society. We pursue a comp comprehensive and systemic approach to tackling the food system challenges, and as a result, we co-invest in activities in four complementary areas. And those are shown right here on the screen. It's education, to bridge the skills gap, and to train the next generation of food system professionals. It is also technology innovation to develop the tools and enablers for transitioning to healthier and more sustainable production and consumption. It is entrepreneurship to train, support, and scale a new generation of agri-food businesses and SMEs. And of course, citizen engagement to embed the behavior change and improve the trust between consumers and food producers. I'm now going to share with you some concrete examples about the solutions we've developed during the past four years. Our education programs extend from academic master's programs, such as the Master of Science of Food Systems, all the way to summer schools to open access online courses that inform and increase knowledge on food systems challenges and issues. 
The screenshot that you have in front of you right now is only a very small fraction of our online courses available for anyone across the globe, be it poultry farmers, marketing professionals, or consumers willing to learn more about food. Also, next month, and we're very proud of this one, we will be launching an online course designed for medical students and professionals to increase their knowledge about the impact of food on, their, on our health and on the environment. Medical professionals are our health advisors, as you all know. However, they only receive, I don't know if you know this, but they only receive typically as little as four to eight hours of training on nutrition in their entire career, particularly during their studies, which as you know, can take like 12, 13 years or so. Now we have developed this particular course with experts from around the world, but also with students, including from Africa, to cater for their needs. With this EIT food course, we're topping up that basic, that basic training with an additional 12 hours. Certainly not enough, but it's a start. COVID-19 has changed our way of life and disrupted our food supply chains. We cannot innovate looking backwards or miss the big picture while trying to solve today's problems. At EIT Food, we integrate insights from public and private institutions, and only then we co-invest on emerging and impactful food systems challenges that will bring a better future. In this philosophy, we have identified six particular technology focus areas that we are working on all the time that deliver on health and sustainability. These are alternative proteins, or also as we refer to them, protein diversification, sustainable agriculture, targeted nutrition, sustainable aquaculture, digital traceability, and circular food systems so as to minimize food loss and food waste, which as you know, is a big issue in the world. About 30% of all food gets lost or wasted in the world. An example from our technology innovation solutions is the low energy electron beam or LEAB system, which is a gentle microbial inactivation technology against viruses and bacteria such as eflatoxins, and that provides consumers with extra food safety. This technology does not change the natural composition of the food and is also quite cost effective and sustainable as it does not require heat or excess energy. Solutions such as these can dramatically improve food safety and security across the world and improve nutrition while reducing food loss and waste across the supply chains. And those are the kind of things that really make us very excited. And that's, that's what we get up and do every day. We also feel that empowering women and attracting them to the agri-food sector is of utmost importance. With our EWA program, we are providing tailor-made support and mentoring to female entrepreneurs during a six-month timeframe. To date, 200 female leaders have completed their training and thanks to our program, also got access to new investors, business partners, research centers, and universities across Europe. SMEs, both in Europe as well as in Africa, are crucial for food production and for the economic activity that they generate. Innovation is essential to the success of the SMEs. Unfortunately, often Enterprise. They are fully integrated into our innovation processes as equal partners to large multinationals and world-class research centers. We provide them with capacity building and upskilling so that their solutions and impact can scale as their particular company grows. Now that I've given you a quick introduction to EIT Food and our approach to food systems challenges, as well as examples of pertinent solutions, I will just stress one important point. The challenges the 
triple burden of malnutrition, obesity, obesity, deficiencies prevalent in all contexts of putting a heavy burden on our planet and depleting our finite resources. These challenges cannot be solved by any single organization or company. Considering the urgency of food systems transformation and the looming age of austerity, we believe that platform to platform collaboration needs to be prioritized in developing and scaling innovations across the globe. By pooling resources, avoiding duplication of efforts, sharing and establishing best practice. Andy, could you please check your audio? We cannot hear you. Andy? Oh. Uh, you, you mute. Yeah. Where, where did I where did where did I lose the the connection? I mean, on the last slide. Um. Okay. Let me see here. Can you still see my slides? Probably not. Right. I have to re-share. Okay. No, unfortunately, I don't know what happened. Uh, uh, me neither. So could, could we... Well, but the presentation disappeared. Hold on a second. I think it's probably. Think, uh, switch off your camera just for the moment of the presentation. Okay, can, can you see this now? Yes. So you see EIT food fostering platform to platform, right? Yeah. Okay, great. So as I was saying with the Food Tech Hub Brazil, but actually, yeah, so, so we, we've, we believe that platform to platform uh, collaboration is important just so that we can avoid the duplications that I mentioned. And I gave you an example of the World Economic Forum work we're doing, but we're also collaborating as an example with the Food Tech Hub Brazil, which is now actually expanding out to all of Latin America. It's now renaming itself to Food Tech Hub LATAM. We're collaborating with them on entrepreneurship, uh, entrepreneurship programs and providing market access to impactful startups. But we are also working with like-minded organizations in preparing the first ever food system summit of the United Nations. That's just because and we, and we strongly believe that it is a great potential, there's a great potential for collaboration and innovation also in Africa. Just this week, we made a proposal to establish an EIT innovation hub in Africa in order to, in order to increase our collaboration with the food systems actors and the international organizations, such as, for example, the African Union to advance food and nutrition security in Africa and to tackle climate change. I hope, very much hope that this summit will be a fruitful start to our collaboration on food systems innovation between Europe and Africa. And we will be very happy to explore collaboration opportunities with you. And that's it for me for today. Thank you. Uh, it's only this from you, but it's already a lot. Thank you so much. Uh, it's amazing news, the news of the day. If you allow, we of course will tweet uh, uh, on the Innovation Cup in Africa. I think this is, this is what we are looking forward for many years, the European Union to be more proactive and to spread the excellence and the, the things that we really can do to share them uh, with those regions and those um, uh societies that are really in need because we need to scale up the, the, the good uh, practice we have it's amazing and i believe that uh, uh, this uh, initiative will really make a huge impact um i personally was very intrigued uh, and not very aware of the program for women you have and you're doing in the food kit, it's amazing. Uh, this is uh, another very important issue. I believe we should not forget when we are uh, uh, now next um, months and years work on the on the new partnership uh, with Africa, and also we can uh, basically um, encourage the science education of, uh, of women. Uh, in uh, in Africa already in the neighborhood policy and the neighborhood development program. Uh, I believe um, 
now it's uh, uh, we already exhausted almost the, the list of the speakers, but uh, still uh, we have with us, uh, and it will be very uh, important uh, again uh, now from the perspective of a member state and one of the most strong organizations in Europe, uh, the French Agricultural Research and International Cooperation Organization, CIRA, to, to, to hear Elizabeth uh what uh, you can share with us uh you heard now so many already different aspects uh but um it's good to uh to, to see your perspective and uh, uh recommendations to the audience so thank you elizabeth thank you very much and thank you to pilar because i prefer that you take the slides Last time I tried to do it by myself, it was a disaster, so I prefer you do it. So thank you very much. So uh, I guess I will keep it quite short. I'm not sure I will give recommendation, but um, I will try to put questions on the table, which is usually what a research center is doing. So next slide. The first point, the first idea I would like to share with you is that when we are talking about food systems, we have to take a broad definition of food systems. So food systems, it's all activities associated stakeholders related to food, which means it's production, uh, processing, logistic, but it goes far behind. And the food systems, they are key for human being, but they have also um, ambiguous relation with the sustainability of resource and natural resources. So in the slide, you have the blue color, which are the positive impact of food system. And in red, you have the negative impact. So when we go to the positive impact of course, food system, they are key to nutrition security, which is so important in Africa. But they also produce wealth jobs, incomes, and salary. And that also is very key to Africa in a context where demographic is so strong. And they link rural and urban territories. They are the link between these two words, and this is also very important. But they contributed at least one third of the green gas emission. And this part of the green gas emission, they are the, the hardest to cut if you compare it to uh, the gas emission related to energy, for instance. Agriculture is the big chunk of the, the, the reduction to come. The second negative impact is the major uh, impact they have on biodiversity and on the collapse, which is well documented by the EBS report. So what, what, what we pretend is that the food system, they should be evaluated in all this dimension of sustainability. So next slide. The second ID um, we want to share with you is that there is a great diversity of food system and that this diversity should be acknowledged. So there is a diversity, but there is also a, a strong dynamism of these food systems. And these food systems, they already have an innovation capacity, an innovation ability, even without science, even without training, and they're moving fast. But there are forms of inequality between all these stakeholders, and these should be addressed. And these forms of inequality, it's difference of power, of opportunity, of voice, of negotiation margin. And we also have to keep this in mind. And for all these reasons, we believe that the institutional and political support should be tailored according to the specific context. There is no um, one size fits at all when we come to talk about food systems and that the pathway we want to propose to countries, they should take into account this diversity and, and this particularity. So next slide. There is the third idea is that there is a need for change. And this is a global consensus. There is a need for deep and genuine transformation of food system. There has been many success in many countries of the Green Revolution, which was based on major investments in infrastructure, in science, in chemicals, which led to intensive agriculture. And this also has resulted in, into longer and more industrial food value added chains. But this model, which has reduced poverty and which has reduced hunger, 
they had led to devastating results for the environment and climate. So when we come to climate, one of the big issues we will have for in the coming years will be first to have an agriculture we can deal with adaptation, how to have crops adapted to, to the challenges of climate change. But we also have to think about mitigation, about inventing new food system that are able to reduce their gas emission. When we come to environment, we know that soils are exhausted by this intensive cropping, which has been developed by the Green Revolution. Water is being polluted and chemicals have a huge impact on humans, but all living beings. And finally, one of the, one of the problems from this Green Revolution is that at the end, security on nutrition remains a challenge. And we still have diet related non communicable diseases, but we still have stunting and we still have malnutrition, especially in Africa, which has this double burden to face. So next slide. We have this need for change and perhaps this year is the right year, this year is the good year. There is this UN Food System Summit, which preparation is going on, and this is the year for the transformation of the food system. At the present moment, right now, the United Nations are preparing this summit, and they are preparing this summit, which we recall uh, were, whose goal was to put solution at the center, not only diagnosis, not only policies, not only ideas, but solution. The preparation right now is a kind of giant brainstorming as it's written, because it's thousands of dialogues, dialogues at the level of the countries, dialogues at the level of the region, dialogues between, between stakeholders, and we do not know what it's going to lead to. But what is already a good point is that the great diversity of food system is acknowledgeable and that we have this multiple way of gathering together and to find solution context specific, which was one of the points we really wanted to underline. So next slide. So this is the year to change. This is the year we, we are all thinking about change and this summit is going to help us, but still we face many resistance to change. And here it comes to science. It's difficult to change because the scientists, they bring evidence, they bring proof, but they do not give the recipe. They do not give the path, they do not give the tool. And we can diagnose as strong resistance to any change. And some resistance can be what we call dependence pathway, habits. And this comes from the high cost of changing the business model. This can also be vested interest uh, to keep the model at it, as it is. We also can see we have different locks and different locks that hinder any kind of progress. And they can be locks at, at the level of the tree tree, at the level of the production. And finally, simply lack of imagination. And what I mean by lack of imagination is the lack of uh, idea to just ask where will we be in 20 years and where do we want to be? And this is the foresight exercise. So what can be the role of science? How can science better link with policy and at different scales between local and global? So next, science. So we think that science should move beyond calls for low alert and knowledge supply. Science has a specific mandate to produce certified and um, disputable knowledge, and it applies rigorous, independent methods and backed by solid theory. But science is much more than this, and it's, it goes far greater than simply providing evidence or transferring knowledge. It has a convening power. It has the power to put all the food system actors at the table and try to find a common knowledge, a common basis to innovate and find the right solution. And this is what we call knowledge broker. So next slide, but we will go again next slide. This one is not needed, thank you very much. 
So what we, we would like to incentivize would be that science plays a very strong role to inform policy and society debate on food system both in Africa and in Europe, because we, we deeply believe that this method can be applied to both continents. We should co-construct theory of change where we want to, to go together because we face the same challenges and how to construct a joint project together. We would like to co-build food system related research question with policy maker. That's to say, these are the questions which are relevant to find solution and let's go together. And finally, we would like to work with and, and strengthen capacity of all the players, which means that we have to work deeply on the ground with our African team's colleagues and try to really strengthen our capacity on both sides. We can be strengthened by, by very strong innovation coming from Africa and Africa can learn from some research we've made in Europe, which are relevant to them. So co-build, co-construct, share and strengthen capacity. And last slide. So I would conclude to give you some proposal for cooperation, what I call perspective for Africa, Europe, dialogue and food system in area of research and innovation for collaboration. So seven proposals shortly. The first one is that we could work on more efficient and sustainable production and especially through agroecology. The second proposal would be to reduce food loss and waste, to reduce pressure on planet resource and promote circular economy. I just recall that 40% of crop is lost from production to the consumer, whether it's in, in transportation, whether it's in storage, so 40%. We have a huge margin uh, of maneuver to, to improve the situation. Third proposal, we could improve nutrition quality of food and diets through better use of natural, natural agrobiodiversity of resources. Fourth proposal, we could, in, we could improve the inclusiveness and the resilience of agri-food system. And this is very important, especially considering not just the food availability, but also the jobs and the incomes, which are key especially in rural region of Africa. Fifth proposal, we would like to strengthen the capacity of various play players. It means to build more joint project. In CIHAD, we have what we call platforms in partnership, where we have joint teams, African and, and, and Europeans. We would like to make foresight exercise together. And of course, also propose professional training, which is highly needed in Africa and higher education, so that we have strong impact. Six proposal to foster multi-stakeholder governance of food system on a territory level, and means to propose a way to really deal with what is needed to be done at the level of the territory. And seventh and last proposal to develop a new methodological tool and approaches to analyze this complexity, this diversity. I've started my uh, my speech with. We have to have tools so that we can see what we can do with this incredible diversity, which is also complex, but where we believe strongly there is possibility for performance and resilience. So I will stop here. And thank you very much for your attention. Uh, Elizabeth, uh, thank you so much. I didn't know that you will uh, finish with these uh, perspectives. I think you uh, make my life easier now because I believe we can have a, a small discussion on uh, these very important bullet points. Uh, my question would be, how we can prioritize? I think all, all the issues you, 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 you now uh, uh, put forward are so important. Uh, although, to be honest, I see um, something very important that still, even in the European Union, we, we struggle with this. Uh, and I believe that one very important ele element is still strengthening capacity and also changing the, the way we, we teach and learn and we develop skills. Because, uh, of course, we are trying to start from the excellence research and to, to boost innovations. But at the end of the day, 
uh, if we don't have the, uh, the, the patience and the knowledge that these things uh, needs a lot of time and a lot of um, uh, learning curve, uh, then it's again difficult. And I believe that one of the most important uh, challenges uh, to concure, uh, to, to reach the sustainable development goals and to reach resilience and sustainability for Africa uh, is basically uh, to, to, to try to, to keep the brain, to keep the human resources there, because we already went through a severe uh, a brain drain in some parts of uh, uh, the European continent, but not only. And uh, this is what we also monitor these migration flows uh, from Africa and within Africa. And I believe that agro-food system is and could be a showcase uh, to rethink also to alert the politicians that this could basically uh, change the pattern uh, and lead to brain gain in, uh, in the African countries, of course, only if uh the young the young generation thinks they have possibility also to study of course uh it, it's funny because for so many centuries obviously we are uh, uh not inventing too too many things obviously at the end of the day it's everything is about knowledge and how we can push the young people to uh, be uh more interested in science and uh, uh how we can really have the lifelong learning experience and practice. But uh, thank you so much. I, I think uh, uh, Pilar will uh, support me. And of course, Zeko and Hiren, uh, I believe it would be extremely um, valuable if uh, uh, we have your um, agreement and we also publish the presentations. Of course, there is a recording of the session, but Many people I read uh, requested already for the for the presentations. Um, we had uh, many participants today joined also from our uh, partners from uh, African region. Uh, unfortunately, uh, we couldn't have uh, some of them as speakers. I think this is also a learning curve, and I think we should encourage uh, the, uh, our partners to be more proactive. Uh, this exercise needs the both parties. Uh, so now I think we have a common floor, a dialogue platform, although online, which is not the best. And I would encourage um, in, uh, posing questions or comments. So the floor is open for comments. Yes, please, I see. I don't see your name because it's a number, but please. Kibre, I think, yeah? Okay. Uh, my name is Yesuna. I'm uh, from Ethiopia. And uh, the meaning of Yesuna is uh, this guy belongs to his creator, God. That's the literal meaning, okay? Uh, Yes, can you hear me? Yeah, very good. Uh, I enjoyed all the presentations and my background uh, tilted to uh, veterinary medicine as well as uh, livelihood and the livelihood uh, mainly focusing on the rural part of Ethiopia. So agriculture is one of the central idea to change the life of people living in uh, uh, Ethiopia. So I enjoyed all the presentations and in what is common in all the papers or in all the speeches is that they are focusing on capacity building. Yeah, that is, you know, uh, a central and the main demand from developing nations, particularly Africa. We Ethiopians, if you refer to the global knowledge index, we are situated in the list, okay, from 138 countries, we are positioned in uh, 132. This clearly tells you that we don't have sufficient, you know, manpower, 
we don't have sufficient you know research and the innovation infrastructure in uh, both higher education as well as uh, technique and uh, vocational education apart from this we are also suffering from you know uh, uh, brain drain you know highly qualified people either you know migrate to europe or some else yeah somewhere else in the world in search of better job and so on and so forth so my question is to all the speakers what kind of you know platform do you have or how do you positively discriminate in order to build the capacity of uh, ethiopians i'm working in uh, the newly established you know university in the southern part of ethiopia that's one question for all and uh, for the first speaker he was talking about one health and i'm very much interested in that area so if, if he's in the position to collaborate i have also a ready-made project proposal so that i will send for him if there are any ways or means yeah we may materialize it in ethiopia so thank you very much I consume the lion's share of your time. It's lunch time here in Ethiopia. <laughs> uh, thank you so much. I think this is the right approach. You are very proactive in the chat. Thank you so much. And I think it's very important also really to uh, to to pose questions because we we really need to to see what is the most valuable for for your country and for for, for your uh, uh, unit and uh, community. So yeah. you pose quite important quest questions, and I now would like to invite uh, my colleagues uh, uh, to what who dare to answer about the university. Yeah, and I have also posted my email in yeah. the comment part. So I badly request all the presenters to share their material as well as their contact details. Thank you once again. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you. Uh, as I said, we will share the recording in the presentation. So I will now keep your email. Unfortunately, we can't have a real brainstorming session. So let's try it on Zoom. Jose, you want to answer, please? Yes, yes. It, it was. Uh, th thank you. Thank you all for the presentation. It was really interesting, really inspiring. But uh, thank you, Jessine, because um, sometimes we need to, 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 to be realistic no? and, and to work with, with the real community. Um, from the, we, we, we talked about agroecology, but I think it's, it's, it's very important because um, uh, agroecology uh, put the, the community in the center. So we need to hear the needs of the community. We need to know the knowledge of the community. There is no way to have a sustainable agriculture if we don't uh, use the, the, the local practices that depend on the context of on your reality. And, and your reality is your reality. And the reality of a, a town or a place in Northern Europe, it's their reality. And they know how to grow crops. They know how to manage the cattle, the, the, the ancestor, the indigenous knowledge, it's, it's essential. And we are seeing here in Europe, but also in Africa that, uh, and, and in other many countries that we are losing this knowledge because there is a generational gap. Young people, it's not living, growing in the same context that our ancestors no? or, or, or parents or grandfathers. So we are losing a lot of knowledge and, and how to manage sustainably the, the, the farms, the, 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 the cattle, the, the, the crops. So uh, what what we are trying to do it's trying to to achieve the the objectives for a more sustainable world and uh, taking into account and putting in the middle the the the, the people you know and and here in, in life we uh, are um proposing or and we are uh, giving some digital tools trying to put all this knowledge together and to go back to you to, to help you to take this knowledge and give back to you to the entire community to, to share about best practices, what is working, what's not. We know that, for example, in Africa, the, the context is different. 
So we need to understand how to approach to you, how to communicate with you, probably with, with some advisors, some organizations, the university. The university there are great for agroecology. So and trying to give advice and, and, and help to, 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 the, to the farmers, to the local people to, to, to go to this, to this, to this way. No? And, and we in Lightwood Cherry, we are developing this uh, in, in, in Europe, but we are also approaching uh, to, to, to Africa, not to give them a, a solution, if not to, to co-build, co-design a solution for, for, for you. No? So, well, I'm not sure if I, uh, I answered your, your question or partially, but um, I, I, I had the feeling that I had to, 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 to intervene, no? to, to comment this uh, to you. Thank you. And thank you very much, uh, Jose. Basically, I think that there are many possible ans answers, but it's uh, uh, always important. Your approach, uh, to be honest, is my favorite ones. And this is really to, to know and to put the, the, the different issues in, the, in a context. What we have, where we can go, and also in a kind of a time frame, because uh, as uh, already uh, Elizabeth shared with us, so they are very important uh, perspectives for development uh, opportunities and they're extremely hot topics. But the variety, the variety is very big. And uh, secondly, without data and without the, putting the, into the context of the, the local problems, uh, I don't think uh, we, we will go anywhere. We will go... Uh, uh, somewhere maybe that uh, the results uh, won't be evident. And this is not what we need after the post-COVID crisis. This is something that we want. The people still have a big faith in science and research and innovation. Uh, they trust, but uh, uh, they expect much more visible, uh, visible results. Yeah. Uh, uh, so, um, who wants to take the floor? Maybe a few minutes. Yeah. Would you please allow me? Uh, we don't hear you very well. Uh, is it, uh, have you given me the chance to talk now? Yes, please, now we can hear you. Okay, my uh, no, it's quite bad. Sorry, maybe you can put in the chat chat box your question. I also uh, just now read that uh, there are some uh, questions about what will be the next next steps to build on ideas for this session. And I wanted basically to, to, do, to discuss with, uh, with all of you. Uh, thank you, Anand. I see that you posed this question. Uh, basically, the idea is um, uh, to, to start uh, concrete uh, uh, ideas and to, to collaborate uh, during the next months uh, so that we can propose uh, something uh, more practical and uh, visionary to the United Nations session in uh, autumn. Uh, but also uh, to go through the uh, work programs of uh, Horizon Europe that have been published yesterday. I don't think we'll have any time for us this summer. And of course, to try to build up, up um, um, good partnerships. Uh, so we will uh, basically uh, create a kind of a small network from, from this session and we'll come back to you. So I'm, I'm sorry, someone wanted to pose a question, but the connection was not good. So um, are there any other comments or someone want to interact? Can I, th can, can I yeah, just speak, uh, can I ask you, you know, because there is this climate uh, summit ha happening, you know, the Glasgow climate summit happening. So I just want to ask, you know, is there any plans to, you know, bring together ideas? Because I saw really great ideas presented by the speaker. So it would be really good you know, if we can, bring these uh, ideas together for, you know, because there's this Glasgow climate, uh, food and climate declaration, so many things happening. So I really hope, you know, we have all these ideas and energies here. So I really hope we can, you know, build up, uh, you know, these things for the, for this uh, Glasgow uh, climate summit happening as well. Thank you.
Thank you so much. I think th this was the point. To two, two hours are not enough. On the same time, it's a, a quite a lot of uh, new things. Uh, I, I, I learned basically. I, I hope you do. Uh, and of course, we can't exhaust everything. But uh, it was a good that uh, your expectations are more or less met, and uh, you are happy with today's session. Uh, so um, I believe that also lunch time is approaching, and many of you are participating in the other session of the African Summit because uh, we have. Uh, this is, I think, the third day of. Uh, Full seminars, and tomorrow we have more to come. Uh, therefore, um, please allow me to thank you one more time for your participation, that you are so proactive, that you are very good listeners. And uh, please, um, let's keep in touch. Uh, uh, send uh, uh, me your uh, also you can contact me on my email to send me your uh, personal uh, um, emails or if you want to, to get in touch with some of the uh, presenters uh, I can um, try to contact them and uh, of course to build on as I said on our uh, partnership I'm putting now uh, in the chat box, my email. Okay. So thank you very much once again, and see you very soon. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Good health. Da. Da.